The Midnight Selkie, Chapter 19 Rowley held on to the ring as he dunked himself underwater. He found the fabric of Nemo's sailor collar, and he pulled the selkie to the surface. He began to cough heavily, trying to expel the water that he had sucked in. Nemo! Nemo! Are you okay? Raleigh asked frantically. Nemo nodded as he continued to cough. After a few moments, after a few moments, he began to regain his composure and breathe normally. It was then that he looked into Raleigh's face. You, you didn't have to do that, Brother Raleigh. Yes, I did. I owed it to you. You'd have done it for me. We're supposed to go through this together, remember? We are not safe out here, Nemo frowned. There are many sharks. They are waiting. They are hungry. Raleigh slid along the ring to embrace Nemo. The young Selkie did likewise. Grandpa won't leave us behind. So long as we stay afloat, they can save us. And so long as we have the ring, we will stay afloat. Brother Raleigh, I'm scared. Raleigh panted out a nervous laugh. I know, Nemo. Me too. The standoff. Phoebus and Atari tensed. Each contemplated the other. Neither one would be foolish enough to underestimate the other. Both Selkies were veterans in battle. For their own safety, they overestimated each other. That was the only way for the two veterans to do battle. As if a bell went off in their minds, they lunged for one another. The battle had begun. By now, the Aquaquami had come to a halt. At the stern stood Yue and Lazuli. There was still daylight, so it was rather easy to find them. Nemo! Yue called. Both Nemo and Raleigh waved for them. They look okay for the moment, but we have to hurry, Lazuli. Lazuli looked about frantically and rushed off only to return with a grappling hook. Maybe we can use this to pull the line from the water. Then we can pull them aboard with no problem. They are two small children. They can't be that heavy. They'll be heavier with the sharks swallowing their legs, Yue replied. Let's just hope we can do it. The captain shouldn't come down here with Atari and Phoebus in a brawl. And Admiral Knight Porter isn't here anymore. Abandon your negative thoughts, Lazuli, Yue urged. Admiral Knight Porter is still with us. Nautilus is still with us. He placed a hand over the younger Selkie's heart. He is here in all of us. Let him guide us. Lazuli nodded and boldly hopped onto the ladder of the stern. He reached out for the line. This was a vulnerable spot. He had no protection, other than whatever wits he could muster. Yui leaned over the stern. He held firmly onto Lazuli's arm. Should he slip, at least Yue would have him. Lazuli paled as he reached for the floating rope. A shark was so close that it made him whimper. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this, he chanted in a whine. The hook hit the shark by accident. It startled the animal, and it sprang upwards. Its head came above the water as it changed directions. Lazuli replied with a cowardly cry and cringed against the ladder. Stay calm, Lazuli, Yue soothed. You frightened it away. It's okay. Try again. You almost had it. Lazuli gathered himself. He mustered up another round of courage. Then he reached out again. He almost had it. Almost. Almost. Got it! I've got it, Yue, he declared, astounded with his accomplishment. His heart beat so fast that he thought it would burst. Help me up, and we will pull them in. Good job, Lajlai, Yue praised as he quickly pulled the other Selkie back into the boat. I knew you could do it. Once on deck, Lajlai rushed to embrace him. He was nearly hyperventilating. That was so liberating and scary, he panted. I feel like I want to pee myself. Hold off on that for a while, Yue chuckled. We still have to pull the boys in. He took hold of the rope. At his count, they both pulled the line taut, and they began to pull the younger passengers back in. Blood trickled onto the deck in perfect gravitational drops. 
Polite squabbles only applied to an opposing amateur. Both Phoebus and Atari were very resilient and stubborn. However, it was Atari with the most experience, and it showed. One hard punch across Phoebus's face, and it sent him stumbling backwards. Most of the blood was his. Even when overestimating the elder, he had underestimated him, and it was costing him dearly. You are foolish, Phoebus. Did you honestly think that you could overthrow me? I am the most powerful Selkie. No one can defeat me. In the end, not even Nautilus could do it. Atari glanced up and noticed the events taking place in the back of the boat. He grinned wickedly. Oh, no, you don't. You won't become heroes so easily. He examined his hands. They were covered in blood. Mostly Phoebus's blood. It was enough. He gave a cruel chuckle as he ventured to the rail. Atari. No, Phoebus pleaded weakly. But it was no use. Atari, too fueled by his hatred and insanity, would not listen. The sulky reached his hand out over the water, watching with a wild eye as the blood dripped and gathered at the bottom of his hand. It welled into a droplet. It then dropped, making its way to join one with salt water. It then dropped, making its way to join as one with the salt water. The result was devastating. Now the hungry sharks could smell fresh blood. They swarmed about the boat more frantically. They were now in a frenzy. Joy! Lajolai! Nemo screamed. Pull us in! Hurry! They're going to eat us! Raleigh cried out. Send them off as best you can! Lajolai called to them. We almost have you! Raleigh and Nemo held tightly onto each other and the ring. They closed their eyes tightly, wishing with all their might for a miracle. They would not be able to kick the sharks forever. It's almost over, Raleigh whispered. It's almost over. Almost got them, Lajolai panted. Almost. Just then a shark leapt from the water, jaws open wide. Yue and Lajolai let out a startled yelp, and they fell backwards. This caused them to accidentally let go of the line. Quickly, it began to uncoil and return to the sea. No, Yue cried out. Lajolai, hurry! Grab the line before we lose it! Both of them scrambled frantically for the line, and they took tight grips once more. They hurried to pull it in again, but that too proved unfruitful. Once the line was taut again, another shark surfaced. This time, the Selkies were not so easily frightened back. They held fast. However, the shark snatched up the line in its jaws and it sliced through it with little effort. The two Selkies on board fell back from the force. Raleigh and Nemo could feel the snap. Oh no, Raleigh cried. It's over. It's over. The line broke, Nemo yelped. What do we do now? Kick like you've never kicked before. Maybe we can paddle to the boat. Nemo gave a nod. And at the count of three, the boys kicked and splashed their legs, propelling the ring forward. They didn't get far, however. The frantic splashing sent the wrong signal to the sharks. Swim, boys! Swim! Lajolai called out to them. The sharks began to bump the ring in their bodies more often. They even began to nip at the ring. One bit into Nemo's pant leg. Luckily, despite the blood-curdling scream, only the loose bell bottom was snatched and quickly released. Are you all right? Raleigh panted. Keep kicking! He cried. Just then, one of the sharks surfaced. The boy screamed in a panic as it bit into the ring and pulled him underwater. No! Yue cried out. They got him! Lajolai whimpered frantically. You see? It's hopeless! Atari cackled. Follow me without question. Any defiance will lead to a similar fate. You are a horrible beast, Yue shouted. You have no soul. I did the little brat a favor, Atari replied. Now he has his parents again. Now he can be with his precious Nautilus. A loud sound screeched overboard. It was a frightening sound, but very familiar. Lajolai lifted his gaze from his hands and let out a surprised gasp. He pointed out to the water with excitement. Look! Marrows! What? Atari spat. 
It can't be. The Sea King is displeased with you, Atari, Yue chuckled. You have underestimated the sea and the power of Kingdom Underwaves. Get out of my way, he growled as he pushed Yue aside. He looked into the water. Indeed. Marrows, now among the frenzy of hungry sharks, were big, aggressive male marrows. What are they doing here? What reason would they have to be out here in the open sea at this time of year? The marrows, strong and brave, faced the sharks head on. They were fearless and vicious, so unlike the timid females. Raleigh and Nemo were pulled to the surface. They sputtered and coughed as the great arms held them afloat. Stay calm, young ones. The marrow gurgled, expanding his gills. I have got you now. Brother Marrow, Nemo cheered. Take us to the boat, please. The marrow nodded and flopped onto his back to keep the boys above water. For his great size and ugliness, the marrow seemed genuinely friendly and compassionate, but obviously protective and aggressive towards anything getting too close. Hold your breath, young ones. And with that, he dove deep down for momentum, and he swiftly swam like a bullet to the surface. He broke through the water and flew into the air. He had leapt with remarkable strength and reached an outstanding height. Just behind them, a shark also leapt from the water. The marrow dropped the boys onto the starboard deck, just as the shark went into his meaty tail. He let out a hard, spine-tickling wail, like a frantic wail or banshee. Down they went to slam into the water, staining the dark blueness with drifting red. It got him, Raleigh yelled. He gave his life for us, Nemo frowned. Brother Marrow was so very brave. But we should feel very lucky, Brother Raleigh. The sea is huge, and males can cover great distances. But what are the chances that we were in the right place at the right time with no one to call them? Yue rushed over to the boys. He snatched up Nemo and held him close. Oh, thank goodness you're all right. I was so afraid for you, Nemo. I'm fine now, Yue. We're okay. Brother Mero was very brave for us. Brother Raleigh, you should hurry inside with your mother, Lajlai said as the boat engines began to rev once again. It is safer in there. Not for long, Atari called out. It is only a matter of time, you fools. You leave everyone alone, Atari, Nemo shouted. We won't let you hurt any of those humans. Ha! <laughs> Phoebus couldn't do it, pup. What makes you think you can? Phoebus wiped the blood from his face and forced himself up. This won't be the same. Right, Lajula chimed in, standing tall and defiant. This will be all of us against only you. You can't ever take us all at once. How dare you, Lajula, Atari roared. You of all people should understand. I do understand. This isn't right. You are a danger to all of us. You are more of a danger to us than the humans. Yue put Nemo down and began to size up Atari. I will not let you harm anyone on this boat. The Selkies followed me until my unfortunate capture. And unlike you, it was only a couple years ago, not a couple hundred. I'm sure that I will still be the popular choice. Atari tensed and backed towards the edge of the boat. The wind blew heavy and rippled over his hair his clothes, and a scarf. He looked like a wild sea ghost. I can win over any of you. I am your lord. I will take on anyone and spill every drop of blood if I have to. You're all mine, took a man. Do you hear me? You're all mine. A crash came from the water. From the depths came a large, pale gray seal. His mouth was open wide as he let out a deep and heavy, aggressive bark and howl. Before Atari was able to turn around, the seal's jaws snapped shut on the free-flying scarf, and he pulled his head down to drop his full weight back into the water. Atari barely got out any audible sounds before he gagged and choked. He was pulled backwards over the rail, and he was dragged beneath the waves. The others rushed to the rail to look. The boat finally began to move, shoving off from its stationary position. He's not resurfacing, Lajlai observed. He is the worst of all of us, Phoebus remarked as he shook his head. He got what he deserved, Yue added. What was that? Nemo asked. Nautilus. 
Raleigh smiled with confidence, having not followed the suggestion to hide inside. Thank you, Admiral. 